creates focus. So the number one limiting belief we have when it comes to setting this big goal, first thing I hear is, but Josh, I like busy, and I like have kids, and I have a job, and I have, and I have this, and I have, you know, like a garage sale next year, and you, you come up with all the different things you have already going on in your life, and you're trying to think, that you, you know what you guys start thinking? When you're here, you're like, oh, those girls on stage, so inspiring, so amazing, this is awesome. And then you go home when you don't feel like chasing your goals and you're not surrounded by this community anymore, and you're like, man, those girls aren't even real, they're fake. I bet they paid for those followers. Oh, pff, that girl hitting Success Club 200, that's not even authentic. You start saying really stupid stuff when you're not surrounded by the people you love anymore. So here's what I need you to understand. Having big goals should not demand extra time out of your day. It should demand more focus, which means you actually spend less time. Did you hear that? Thank you, man. I appreciate that. It does not demand more time. It demands more focus because I have found Team call after team call after team call after team call after team call. Now, people on the team call are supposed to be the ones that are all in. Supposed to be. And yet, even on the team calls, I can confirm from a couple hundred team calls that I have done that nine out of ten people on the team calls don't even do daily invites. I can take a poll here, but I'd have to turn my back because I might want to cry to see how few people do daily invites. And then, I don't even, how do you hit such big numbers? I don't even know how that happens. Like, well, I don't know. Maybe if you'd stop researching hashtags and filters and talk to people, maybe you would hit big numbers too. And maybe, thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. you don't do the work it takes. That's why you don't get what you want. Same thing you tell your challengers. Oh, but this doesn't even work. Like, I mean, I like tried that Shakeology. It tastes kind of like grass, and then the workouts are like too long. <laughs> a, I mix almond butter like this much in every single one. It tastes like freaking Reese's peanut butter cup, and the workouts are 30 minutes in your home. Like, do you hear how stupid people sound when they're talking about not having time for fitness? Well, that's what I hear from you when you tell me you ain't got time for your business. My favorite Instagram quote, you want to hear it? And every single one of you have posted it probably five times this week. You ready for it? Next time you say you don't have time, try instead saying it's not my priority. <laughs> and I just want to every single, I'm going to, you know, my third party apps have gotten shut down that would help me build my Instagram. Anybody else? Rough day, rough day. But I wish they were still working so that I could have an automatic manual auto response to everyone who does that and say, did you work your business today? <laughs> because we love to get real like, like real like in the face about did you work out today, huh? You got excuses? Well, that's stupid. Uh, but I can't like work my business today because it's been rough and like, it's, it's like scratchy right here in my throat. It's, it's, it's what? Meanwhile, you're over here like working out with Sean T. How do you work out with Sean T and then make any excuse about anything in life? <laughs> right? Dude makes me cry. Talking like real tears streaming down the face. So urgency creates focus. It makes us focus in on the things we should be doing instead of getting caught up in all of the millions of things we've heard on national wake-up calls that we could be doing. Now, it's great to constantly be learning. I want you on every national wake-up call. I want you on every team call. But at the end of the day, you gotta bring it back and focus on what you need to get done today. Does that make sense? And if you do those things first, you that frog. Do those things first. All of a sudden you realize, oh yeah, huh, I ran out of time. I didn't even have time to research new hashtags today. That's cool. No new hashtags today. 
Okay? If you want to take like a Saturday and go do that, that's fine. But Monday through Friday, not the best activity. Okay? Number two, urgency breeds creativity. Breeds creativity. So here's what happens. When you finally focus on the right things, we've got some people in the room that are like, bro, I've been focused. I am like laser sharp. I boom, 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 boom. But the results that I really want are still not happening. This is where creativity comes in. Because when you do the right things, but you got this dream up here. In year three of my business, I'm listening to Grant Cardone, 10X Rule for the first time. Show me something if you love Uncle G. Show me something. Now, in my first year as a life coach, I made $500. That's a rough year. That's <coughs> real bad. Year number two, I started living this focus thing that I'm talking about, and I made $48,000 part-time. But I'm listening to 10X Rule, and he's like, you need to add a zero. And I'm like, Grant, what? But I'm a rule follower, so I was like, all right, bro, I made $40,000 detailing cars, let's add a zero. Year three, I said, I'm gonna make $400,000. <laughs> See, when you write down the thing you really wanna do, you, it's hard to say, like, four, hundred. That's like 10 years of detailing cars. It's probably more money than most of my family makes in like 10 years. I was gonna try to make that in one year. And I'm just this like punk little 30 year old kid who's never done anything in his life trying to figure out like, I mean at that point, I didn't, I didn't even have an Instagram. I, I, I think I was like taking pictures of like motivational quotes. Does everybody remember that when you first started? And like the only thing you know, you like get word swag. You're know, like, oh man, I'm gonna spend like 45 minutes on graphic. I'm gonna make it so pretty, awesome. And then it gets two likes and you're like, oh, that sucked. That was me. <laughs> So I said, all I know is Shalene Johnson and Lewis Howes literally show up in my feed every 15 yep. seconds. I'm talking like sometimes the ad will, will like refresh and a new one will show up. <laughs> Lewis Howes would disappear and reappear. What is he doing? I didn't know that Facebook ads was a thing, but I knew that if I was gonna hit this goal, I needed something more, I needed to expand. And I heard Shaleen Johnson mention Facebook ads, and I went all in for six months straight. I dove in, I learned Facebook ads, I took over the news feed, and on December 31st at like 10.05 p.m., I hit $400,001 in the year. Hold up, hold up. That was just because I was willing to focus like never before and get creative because I didn't have a choice, which is point number three. Urgency demands ownership. Do you wanna know the real reason? I'm gonna close up with this real quick because I know we got some awesome people that wanna speak today. You know the real reason you don't wanna say that number out loud that you wrote down, whatever it is, that rank, that goal, that income, that coming home from what? You know what the real reason is you don't wanna say it out loud? Cause you don't wanna take ownership. And the second you say it out loud, it's yours. And you would much rather just have it in here so that if you wanna change your mind in another week, it's super, you know, uh, I was like, oh, I was gonna go for a leap, but I'm thinking like one star is kinda cool. I'm thinking it's like maybe add one star. If your goal is to spend 12 months working your business and helping people, and your only goal is to help one other person do what you've done, I'm sorry, but that, that is not a goal. Now, if that's what ends up happening, that's fine. If you do everything you possibly can, and that's the result, I'll be proud of that. You tell me you gave everything you had, and to be honest, I don't even care what the scoreboard says. I'm proud of you. But don't you dare, with a world out there hurting, with a world out there struggling, with a world out there that needs you, don't you dare sell them short by setting such a tiny ass little goal that you never take the time to go find them. You see what I'm saying? That's why I don't believe in setting any small goals. I need to set a goal big enough, it forces me out of my comfort zone, out of my own way, out of my head, into my heart to go find humans that need me. Thank you. So urgency, having this goal that I call a puke goal, having this thing makes me go, 
you know what? Instagram crashed the other day. I don't care. I gotta go. I gotta talk. To some, I gotta find a way to talk to somebody. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I'll write a letter. Is that even a thing anymore? Like, I'll write a letter, put like thirty letters in it, ask people to give to their neighbors. I don't know. Like, we'll just find something. Like, but that's the thing. When you have urgency, you take ownership, and when you take ownership, guys. You stop caring if your upline text messaged you five times today to tell you how lovely you are and how amazing you are and how much they love you. <laughs> My upline just isn't very supportive. I shook John Maxwell's hand two times. The first time I was a little pissed. I was like, bro, I just paid you all this money. I just traveled all the way to Florida. I thought me and you was gonna hang out and I thought I was gonna tell you about my favorite chapter in the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership and we're gonna have like a, you know, like a bro moment. I got a handshake and then the security guy said, next. <laughs> what? what do you mean next? I didn't, even, I didn't even tell about the law of lit yet. And then I stopped and I looked around and I saw a room like this. I said, if Jay Max would have had that conversation with me, he couldn't have afforded to invite this many people to join him. So what's more important that I get a hug and a kiss from Jay Max? Or that he created the resources that set me up to live the life of my dreams. I don't care if you're upline supportive. Who are you? What are you doing? I don't care if your spouse is supportive. Oh, my, my spouse is very supportive. What do I do? I don't know. Tell him to go back to watching football. <laughs> and then go sell 10 challenge packs. husband isn't super supportive of that and so I'm not sure if I can do that said no girl ever correct <laughs> one of the guys on my team on Monday nights his wife goes and watch Bachelor he's like what do you want to do Monday night I'm like what do you mean what's Monday night it's Bachelor night I mean I got the night off <laughs> well guess what ladies football season you got all day Saturday all day Sunday the man he's just gonna be like just the, just put a little extra whiskey in his drink let him snooze on the couch, go work your business, okay? <laughs> but I'm sick and tired of hearing all the reasons you can't do it. I'm sick and tired of you saying out loud all the reasons you can't, and then I just want you to say the one thing you want to do, and we don't even want to say it out loud. We gotta like keep that hidden in the secret, like write it maybe in a journal and like lock it up in a box somewhere. We need to just get honest about what we were born to do and the people we're gonna help and the lives we're gonna change. And man, there's just too much good going on in this world for you to sit around one more year, one more quarter, one more summit and not be proud of what you have accomplished. You know what I'm There were a whole lot of people. My homegirl, Micah Folsom, walked the stage last night as a number 11. And that was, that was hard for her. That was really hard for her. But you know what? She's been in the top 15 something like six years in a row now. She's only hit top 10 one of those years. But by having that goal and staying in the top 15, she has failed five out of six years and in the process has created a double superstar team that does seven figures a year and allows her to rent out the most badass spots in Salt Lake City for team retreats that I get to go hang out and speak. I don't know why. So I'm thankful for Micah. Her whole team is thankful. Now tell me this, how many of you right here would say, Josh, I would totally get out of bed a little bit early every day, do extra personal development, if it meant I could make an extra $100 this year. That wasn't worth clapping. I wouldn't do that for $100. Y'all crazy if you do that for $100. And that's why little goals are stupid. But if I said, hey, how many of you wake up early, do extra personal development, tell your husband to go back to watching football, get on the national wake-up call, live by a tracker. How many of you do that for an extra $10,000 this year? Okay, how about an extra $50,000? How about an extra $100,000? What if I told you that next year that table could be filled with your team? What if I told you that in five years this room could be filled with your team? What if I told you that in 10 years, you have to like find your own summit because Carl ain't got room for you and your team. 
That's worth waking up early. That's worth reading extra books. That's worth doing something special. Would you guys agree? Yeah. That's why I believe it's few goals. Because if I set the goal way up here, all of a sudden, I ain't got a choice. I got to make some sacrifices. I got to do some things that used to scare me. I got to do some things that were hard. I got to do some things that aren't the most fun thing in the world. That's how I grow, and that's how I reach more and more people and change more and more lives. So we're going to do a little exercise real quick to close this out. I do want to do a really, 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 really fast, shameless plug. Daniel gave me permission to do this. Thursday, I have a free online virtual webinar called Post Summit Momentum. Post Summit Momentum, I'll be teaching um, another lesson on how to take the momentum of an event, turn it into a lifestyle. John Maxwell calls it law of process. Leaders are made not in a day, but one day at a time. It's for anyone that wants to join. So you got coaches at home. You're like, oh my God, they missed Summit, but I really want them to catch this energy. It's for anyone. They can come. They can show up Thursday night. It'll be recorded. It is on Zoom, so it's limited to 500 people. So make sure you get in there, save that Zoom link, and you're ready to go, okay? Um, also, when this whole day is over, I'll be out here um, at my table. I brought some books. Does anybody want a free signed book? <laughs> the only thing you have to do is get your picture taken with me, and you can have a free book. Is that, is that a good deal? Is that a good deal? Okay. Maybe if you're lucky, we'll throw Jenny in. She's actually the one you want to get your picture with. So here's what we're going to do. I want everyone to stand up. 